Hi! Today's video is about finding your niche, what you can do better than anyone else and make more money with your stock photography. And I'm going to tell you the biggest mistake you can make when first starting out. I'm Logan Bannatine, I've been selling stock photos under the brand name Lolo Stock since 2013. This is a series about getting started making money from stock photography and this episode is about what to shoot. This is a five-part series, you don't really need to watch the episodes in order as there's lots of information in all of them and they, they kind of overlap and flow together and break up and, and sync and merge. I may be repeating some information or adding to something I've already said in a, another episode, but repetition is good, it will help you remember. So, bottom line, be sure to watch all the episodes to get the most out of this. If you don't want to miss part 4 and 5, um, be sure to subscribe. I'll be uploading new content every week. There's also going to be videos about filmmaking and stock footage. Hey, that's a completely different kettle of fish. But another really profitable route to go down if you're looking to build passive income, regardless of whether or not you're already selling your still images. In the introduction piece, I was saying how I was able to increase sales by taking pictures of my girlfriend just doing uh, just doing normal day-to-day -day stuff and just being herself, being authentic. So that was uh, one characteristic developing in my portfolio. Another one, if you look through my portfolio on my website, Adobe or any of the other links below, you'll see that in every single shot of my girlfriend, her face is either obscured, cropped, just above her mouth, or the picture was taken from behind with her looking the other way. Now the thing about stock photos, if you didn't know this already, is that they can end up anywhere. Like anywhere. Anyone can use them for just about anything. So say for example you're a personal trainer promoting a vegan diet to your clients. You decide to pose for some stock photos just for fun or as a favor to your photographer friend. You sign a model release and forget about it. A month later, you see your face on a billboard advertising the new extra meatball monster sausage pizza from the Beefy Mike Beef Face Company Incorporated. Probably not good for your business. Hmm. A few weeks after that, you find out that your image has been used to represent a roid rage husband in a domestic abuse awareness campaign. Not good. But there's nothing you can do about it because you signed a model release. And as long as the photographer or the the people who buy the people who buy the image uh, don't violate any of the terms in that release, they own your face. That's why, as a stock photographer, when taking pictures of people, always, always get a model release. Doesn't matter if you're using a professional model, your dad, your wife, your best friend. Always make them sign a model release and be nice tell them exactly what it is they're, they're signing up for anywho back to my girlfriend she's been running her own successful business as a pole dance instructor shout out she's an amazing dancer and you should check out her channel even if you're not into that kind of thing but why wouldn't you be one of her videos has had over a million views on youtube and i helped her shoot it so when she first agreed to model for me, it was on the condition that I didn't show her face. Which I think may have done me a huge favor. That didn't quite sound right. It did me a huge favor because um, inadvertently it helped me find my niche. The um, anonymous Caucasian lady in authentic lifestyle situations niche. Which is quite specific. And that's exactly what you want you want to find a very specific niche when you're first starting out. Later on, when you're more established, um, you can start branching out a bit. But first, you need to focus on one niche. I say niche, some people say niche. I'm not a linguist, but that doesn't quite sound right to me. However, I like the fact that it rhymes with rich because that's where it's at. Riches in the niches. And this is the biggest mistake, in my opinion, that you can make as someone uh, just starting out, hoping to make money with stock photography, not focusing on your niche, 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 niche. 
So how do you find your niche? Well, you need to think about what you can do better than anyone else. Or maybe not anybody else. Um, let me rephrase that. You don't have to be the absolute best. That's great if that's what you aspire to. Ambition is awesome. I think that's what drives the world forwards. But at first, just finding a niche where you think you can be in the, uh, be in the top 20%, that's good enough. If you're not in the top 20%, don't expect to make a lot of sales. I have a few shots of food in my portfolio. They sell sometimes. I like food photography. I think it's fun to do and I get to eat something. But am I any good at it? No, not really. When I look at food photography and stock sites, on Instagram for that matter, or I watch people on YouTube doing tutorials, seeing them with their little, little, little tools, meticulously putting drops of sauce in strategic positions, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, dude, what the f You're a genius. There's no way I can compete with that. So, I don't. I don't do it. Not to make money anyway. I just do a little bit of food photography sometimes for my own enjoyment and, and to learn and improve my skills. So I'll say it again. Find your niche. Now, some people say they can't possibly do stock photography because they live in the middle of nowhere. They can't find models to pose for them. It's, it's always raining. If you live in the middle of nowhere, that's great. Chances are nobody else from your part of nowhere is selling stock photos. Let's say, for instance, you live in, uh, live in Tibet. You're in a unique position to take photos of a yak in its natural habitat. And people buying images outside of Tibet would pay good money for that. While you're out there shooting, if you're able to capture a shot of a yeti, even better. That's the only photo you'll ever need. You can retire on that. My point is that there's always something unique to your part of the world or your life that you can turn into your niche. Do you have any other skills? Do you practice a sport? Do you have another job? Ask the same questions of your friends and family. Let's say, um, let's say your brother-in-law is a dentist. Could you come along to his clinic and do, do a few shots? Just a few shots of the equipment, the den dentist's chair, the little little instruments, things like that. Would he pose for you? If not, could he coach a model to pose convincingly as a dentist? There's a serious gap in the market for stock photos of people um, who actually look like they know what they're doing when they're when they're doing a job. Hashtag bad stock photos of my job. Check it out. It's funny. You will laugh. If you want to make money as a stock photographer, do not add to that collection. Okay, so you think you found a niche, but is it possible that it's too niche? Yeah, potentially. There's a fine line between being very niche and just plain silly. Right, so business people. That's like one of the most popular categories, like ever. One of the most popular niches in stock. Um, Suit wearing business people in, in a fancy office. Been done a million times. Go deeper into that niche. Do casual business people in an upstart office. Now that's been uh, been done a lot as well lately. So what can you do now? You can go deeper still into that niche, into the business niche. Um, husband and wife team running their business in a home office, in the kitchen. That's what you would call a micro niche. Husband and wife team running their business from home wearing lingerie and top hats. Very niche. But this is also where things start to get a little bit goofy. Oh, and here's another tip. Um, this is for the male photographers especially. Please don't try to incorporate semi-naked women into every shoot that you do. If glamour and beauty, or, or even fashion, if that's your niche, fine. Do that and do it well. But, um, but otherwise, the world does not need more stock photos of young women in bikinis using power tools. By the way, you might be asking, are there any niches that are more profitable than others? Where can I make the most money? That's a very simple answer to that. You will make the most money in the niche that you enjoy. If you don't enjoy what you do, if you don't feel a surge of excitement when you pick up your camera before a shoot, you're in the wrong niche and it will show in your work. If you love people and you love taking pictures of them, you're in luck. Because lifestyle has always been the niche seeing the most sales. Model released images of people 
having a great time, enjoying life. That's the kind of content that uh, that advertisers and other people buying stock images. Um, that's that's what they want to see. That's what they're always looking for. Woo! End of part three. If you've been watching from the beginning of this series, thank you so much for sticking around this long. I hope you're finding this stuff useful and that you'll continue this journey we're on together in the next in the, in the next video. I also have a Skillshare course about starting stock photography. You can watch it by signing up for a two weeks no commitment trial using the link below. So this was all about finding your niche and I'll say it again, starting stock photography without focusing on a niche is, uh, is probably the biggest mistake you can make. Without a niche you're, you're just shooting in the dark and you're wasting your time. So have you found your niche yet or are you struggling for inspiration? Do you think there's nothing unique about the place where you live, nothing interesting in your, in your life that you can use to create? great stock images. There's always something amazing to capture right outside your front door. Maybe you just need an outsider's point of view to see it. Comment below and let's get a conversation going. See if we can all help each other out here. Alright, so the next video is about keywording. Ranking your images and making sure that buyers actually see them, which is uh, quite important.